Welcome back. I'm George. Again, as always, we're so glad to have you here. So don't forget to comment, subscribe, and if the bell shows up and you want a notification about every time we post a video, just click the bell. It'll ask for your email address and you'll get a notice every time we post a new video. Today we're going to do the one we promised. It's like a follow-up, but also there's an additional step we're going to add to it, but it's the follow-up of our corn fermentation. And Bobby Claiborne out there in Tennessee, who's been on the phone with me and back and forth, uh, really wanted to see us collect some yeast, uh, you know, clean it, and so we can reuse it. Yeah, so we're going to do that. Uh, but um, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's a real simple process. It's a little laborious, takes a little while, but it is very, very possible. So I've got my two buckets. You remember the popcorn and the uh, regular corn. They both started out at 1.094. They are both now down at 1.000. So I have what is um, calculated out to be, what, 12 and a half, maybe 13% ABV in each one of these, okay? So that's what we've got for our alcohol by volume. It makes no difference right now, but we just need to know that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this into two of my, I got water jugs sitting here that I've already cleaned, sanitized, turned upside down, just let them sit there for a while. Uh, I'm going to transfer it into there, and that's going to leave us with the gunk on the bottom. Now, if you're a beer maker, it's trub. If you're a wine maker, it's lees. Uh, and if you're a uh, moonshiner, it's junk on the bottom. So it can be any of those terms, but all of that yeast and everything is settled out. I've still got some solids and some other stuff I need to settle out, and I'm going to use Turbo Clear. I'll show you, use, I, I'll show you how I use that. Uh, it works extremely well. So without further ado, let's get down to business, and I'm going to just use a regular siphon hose. I'm going to siphon from here into the, you know, that's a simple problem. I'll be back as soon as I get that done. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm not going to use vacuum distillation or vacuum transfer right now. I'm not trying to degas. I'm not at this point. I'm just trying to get it out. So uh, I'll be back with you uh, shortly. Now, we've got it transferred, and, and I didn't spill a drop. I'm, I'm amazed. I want to give you a couple real quick tips. Uh, you know, no siphon hose is ever going to stay straight. You see what I did at the end of that? I cut it off on an angle. Cut it off on the angle as where it bends in. So cut it off. And what that does is that when it gets inside that bucket, it'll stick inside that bucket and it'll siphon from the top instead of trying to suck things up from the bottom. See, just, it's just a simple adaptation to a hose. Um, and what you do is you hold the hose out here, you know, well, it's about that deep. And then that way you hold your finger here when you put it in, you know you're right there almost at the bottom and you're actually siphoning from top down into the hose and then out. <laughs> Got it. Good. Now, I'm going to show you what I've got left here. Uh, we've got a lot to work with. So when I come back, I'll have these two up here, and I'll have these two down here, and then we'll get started. I'm going to introduce you to a new technique that I haven't shared with you yet, um, and it's all about cold crashing. And it's a technique borrowed from our beer brewing industry. Mm. I know I got you teased into it right now, so stand by. We're set. Uh, popcorn on this side, and again, the regular corn on this side. Now, you notice there is a, there is a visual difference between these two, although they're, they're both equal. Uh, this one's a little bit darker, and this one's a little milkier. So we're going to find out what the result of that is at, at the very end on another video. Now, I wanted to show you what I've got here, and let me get set. There, now, you'll see this, uh, this nastiness on this side. This is the popcorn. This is the regular corn. And it's just a, like a slop in the bottom. Oh, I got some on my fingers there. That, and you'll notice on this one, I had a really good krausen where it fermented and it bubbled all the way up. This one was a little bit cleaner and it dropped. So um, we're going to see if that makes a difference as well. All right, here's what I did now. Uh, I've already cleaned my buckets and set them aside. You know, and then I take my star sand, put it on mist, and I give both buckets a, just a, a couple of squirts of mist and just let it sit there. Uh, that ensures that while they're in storage and not being used, nothing will grow on them. And they'll always, all I got to do now is rinse them out, clean them, and start to use them again. So what you'll need here is just a couple of containers. Um, and I've got some mason jars that I'm using. Um, now we're going to do what we call cold crash. Uh, let me explain that real briefly because what cold crashing is, and it's used a lot of times in, in our beer brewing industry, um, and it's used to clarify beer in a quicker manner. 
And what that means is, is that, is, see, if you can take a beer that is already fermented um, and you're, you're ready to clear it, or even a wine, a wine works extremely well. It, and if you lower the temperature drastically, uh, what happens is, is anything that is water soluble, uh, that is a fatty or of a protein, uh, will start to solidify and then it starts to drop to the bottom. And that's called cold crashing. Now, and it happens rather, rather quickly. It can happen overnight. Um, and so we, we've adapted that uh, into our distilling practice for, for collecting uh, yeast. Uh, it, it, okay, it, before you decide to put it in a freezer, I know somebody's going to say, well, why don't you just freeze it? Well, well you could, all right? Uh, of course, that's that's how the your original um, apple pie or apple jack was made. That you know, big old barrel, and it would freeze, and then there was just nothing but alcohol left in the center because everything on the outside froze. And then they tasted, they're like, "Whoa, good!" That's the very beginning, the roots of that. Um, at twenty percent alcohol by volume, which is a little higher than you know, we've got what twelve, twelve and a half. Um, at that alcohol level in water, uh, your freezing point for uh, for that solution is like 15 degrees uh, Fahrenheit or negative 9 degrees Celsius. Uh, if it was a 40% ABV, it would be negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 23 degrees Celsius. Uh, and of course, at, at 80, look, if we're talking you know, 160 proof, 80%, it's going to be hard to freeze that stuff because you got to go down to negative 75 Fahrenheit or negative 59 Celsius. All right. So don't worry about it. I mean, if you've got a really high alcohol by volume, you put it in the freezer, it's not going to freeze. I mean, that's why our antifreeze, hint, hint, it's got a lot of glycol and uh, ethanol in it. All right, um, we've got these here. So what we'll do is we'll add some distilled water. Um, once we add this distilled water, now you'll see this is really mucky. So this is going to take probably several generations um, in order to get it to clarify because what we want it to do is we want it to separate out and what should, what should separate out should be our clean yeast so what I'm doing you notice here we're just diluting like like crazy uh, to give it a medium in which to separate now why don't I use a turbo clear on this well because I don't want all it see if you use a turbo clear everything just settles out together um, I want gravity to work in our favor and I want to separate those solids that I know are going to do something, yeast, because they're going to fall all the way down to the bottom. You follow me? Uh, it's really a simple process after that. We've got it in there, give it a good shake. And then I will put this into the refrigerator and we'll be back uh, several hours or maybe even another day. Um, and Bobby, after about three or four of these runs like this, uh, we should have some clear, clean yeast saved uh, to use over and over again. Now, why would you do this? There's really <laughs> two good reasons. Uh, one good reason is if you find a yeast strain that you've developed, um, and that you've worked in a mash, and it really, really turns out good, and you know you can point your fingers at uh, the development of that yeast colony. And you go, man, I, I wish I could do that again. Well, collect that yeast, save it, and do it again. All right? Um, if, you, it, if push comes to shove and it's just really, really hard to get to wherever you got to go to to get some yeast, this also works well in your favor. Um, but for most of us, um, and me in particular, it's, I'll just talk about myself. Um, I just use fresh yeast almost all the time, it, only because, uh, first, I haven't really found that specific strain I wanted. Um, and two, uh, it's, it's relatively inexpensive. Now, if I was to save this because of it being a specific strain, I probably wouldn't use these. Because uh, remember, we only used, what, five pounds of the corn and 19 liters here. Um, and we had to put a bunch of sugar in it. So I'm, I'm really not getting anything specific or special. This is just for a demonstration. But here later on, we're going to get together and we're going to do an all grain where we have to add absolutely no sugar. Um, we're going to develop our own recipe. We're going to put it together. We're going to ferment it. We're going to clarify it. And then we're going to move on. Now it's time. Uh, as promised, before we go any further, I'll, there we go. My turbo clear. I got packet A and packet B. 
Uh, so in my jugs here, I'm just going to squirt in packet A, the whole packet, uh, wait for an hour, and then squirt in packet B. And then by tomorrow afternoon or so, this should be just about clear. So stick with us and uh, we'll give you the update as it comes. Well, we're still here out in the man cave and um, I've got a quick update for you. It's been four hours. Bobby, it's been four hours. So um, we're getting ready to take our first look at uh, cold crashing and trying to separate that yeast uh, so that we can collect it and reuse it, all right? Now in the meantime, you know, I put, I use my turbo clear in these two, and I, I know you can see it from there, but if you look here, you'll see there's my sediment level on the bottom of this one. It's starting to clear up really good. It's only been four hours. Uh, and you can see there's a larger sediment base in this one, um, and it's still a little cloudy. So um, that's gonna take probably a good 24 hours, but this one might clear up before tomorrow morning. Oh, let's get, let's get to what I was talking about. Now, cold crashing, remember, um, we, we borrowed the term and we borrowed the, the, uh, the process from our beer brewers. And so you know, one of your questions may be, George, well, why don't you just cold crash the whole thing? Um, can you do that? Well, why, certainly. Um, but now you're going to need a, a BAF, a big freezer, and a controller in that. A PID controller would work or an analog controller of some sort to maintain the right temperature because you don't want to put, you don't, you, well, you could put it in freezing if you got it at least at, 20% alcohol by volume, but yeah, uh, you could put this whole thing in there, and but that see that becomes almost not economical in a, in a way uh, when you can use Kia salt and sheet of sand, which is in the turbo clear, and and clear it out anyway. But or oh, you could if you've got a freezer sitting by, or you got one of them huge walk-in refrigerators, by all means, cold crash your mash. That rhymes. Let's pull it out and look at our yeast. Well, there it is, folks. That's four hours uh, in the refrigerator, uh, cold crash. And you can see that it has had a definite effect. Uh, matter of fact, and I'm gonna bring it up close and show it to you, but there's our sediment level. There's a sediment level. There's a sediment level and a sediment level. Uh, and they're different only because it, they were, there were different volumes in these jars to start with when it came to the slurry that came out the bottom of the bucket. So don't let, that, don't let that confuse you. It has nothing to do with what we're doing. It just happens to be how much came out of the bucket. Um, I'm going to show you this on a close-up, but you got to be careful not to disturb it too much because you don't want to resuspend all this stuff that you've already separated. And let's take this larger jar, and I'll try to move slowly with this so that you can see this. Now, if you look here, you can see the light color here. This is yeast. This is the yeast that has settled out. Now look way down at the bottom and you'll see, there's, there's, you should be able to see that. I don't want to tilt it too much. See that darker layer in there? Okay, now that's all the byproducts and all the things that you're not going to want. Let me see if there's a better view of that on this one. It is if you look straight up underneath it, but uh, there, there, you got a good view there. You see that, that dark, that's, that is the, that's, there's a dark sediment in the bottom here. It's darker than this. And uh, the same thing goes for these. Uh, I, hopefully I didn't mix that up too bad. And so what, now what we're going to do is I'm going to carefully take a small uh, hose and I'm going to siphon off this water all the way down to here and then especially in this one because this one's really profound as well as this one is and then we're going to scoop this out and leave that dark stuff behind we're going to put that into another jar then we're going to add some more distilled water we're going to shake it up and we're going to put it back in the refrigerator and then we'll come back here tomorrow and go through this process again there and hold your fingers so that you don't get all the way there. And then, ooh, that tastes good. <laughs> there, see now, hmm, that was pretty good. So now we're gonna suck all that out, Oops, siphon it out. And when it gets down to that bottom down there, we're gonna be really, really careful. I don't wanna really disturb much of that yeast. Uh, it wouldn't matter, because there's plenty there. Okay, now we're ready to separate. 
I've got two items here. It, look, you can use a whole bunch of different things. Uh, the best I could find right offhand was a, an ice cream scooper and a big soup spoon. So um, I'm going to use both of those to try to accomplish. I just sprayed it with star sand. Oh, you know, and another reason why we put it in a refrigerator, why we're cold crashing, what does that do to our yeast? You know it. They go dormant. So if there, is, if there are any fermentable sugars in there, you don't have any re-fermentation taking place. You get, your yeast is just sitting there. So that's another reason why the cool temperatures are to your advantage. So let's get some of this out of here. Okay, now we're back to step one again. I'm going to add some more distilled water. Um, then we're going to, and you'll see what I ended up with when it came to jars. I'm, I'm, I'm downsizing the jars so it makes it, it's just so it's a little bit easier for me to mess with. Uh, and really, these, I think I got these jars just maybe just a little bit too full, but you can see the volume that I started with as opposed to the volume that I have now is different. So, well, remember what we didn't collect is we didn't collect anything that was all, way, way on the bottom because that was the solid particulates and the excrement, and things like that, that, that yeast produce as well. So, uh, now it's just nothing more than putting the lids on them, shake them and stick them back in the refrigerator. This is the popcorn and this is the regular corn. And uh, we'll probably end up with about the same amount, who knows, of, uh, of yeast. Oh, there we go. And I just pop the lid on, shake them, and then put them back in. Hey, one last tip for you before I put these in a refrigerator, and that is cleaning out the hose. Um, and I've learned, this, this is the hard lesson to learn is about you clean as you go. So, you know, as I finish, you know, I clean, put my jars back there. Just, just clean as you go. It makes it so much easier, uh, and especially if you're using a hose for siphoning. And like I did with the large hose that I used to siphon from the bucket down into the bo bottles or into these jugs. Run water through them real quick, then you walk outside, you grab one end, you let the other end go. And remember when you was a kid and you did the, the helicopter thing? You know, you just whirl it a whole bunch of times. It does two things. One, it'll cause a minor vacuum in here, so it'll suck off the water. And oh, by the way, centripetal force forces the water out that way anyway. See, because you can have a difference of air. Don't worry about that. It's just basically a centripetal force. You should, will cause all the water to come out of the inside of your hose and make it last a whole lot longer and stay a whole lot cleaner. That's enough for me tonight. I'll see you tomorrow morning and we'll go through this again. All right, day two. And uh, I came out here late last night. And I did this one more time. I just, I just, I get in the roll in the mood and I just keep on rolling with it. So um, let me show you what I've got now. This is the corn, this is the popcorn, and you'll see just, I see how white that is? That's clean yeast. So what we'll do, uh, yeah, there we go. So what we'll do now is, that I'll use the same process, I'm going to siphon off that distilled water off of that, I'm going to make sure I get to separate, there's nothing left in the bottom, I don't have to do anything else. I want to get all of that water off, and then uh, I'm going to introduce some more distilled water in all of those containers, because I've still got the other ones in the refrigerator. Uh, and then I'm going to give it a good shake and let it settle one more time. Uh, and that time when it settles, I'll put clean distilled water in it, and I'll just store it in the refrigerator. It, when I'm ready for my next run, I could just as easily reach in and pull that out and use that as a yeast starter. See, simple. Here's the results of my clarification. This one has gotten real clear, and I can still see that thick sediment in the bottom. Uh, this one has definitely cleared out, and I've got a really thick one. It's about an inch and a half of sediment here. So uh, I need to rack these off, transfer them into something else, uh, get them cleaned up, and uh, I'll store them away. Now remember, I'll just put the cap on here, and as long as you leave it sealed, it's a natural preservative. It cannot turn to vinegar. And there you have it. Bobby Claiborne, out of Tennessee, that's how we separate, collect, and store yeast. Happy distilling.